The chain block was added to Minecraft in the 1.16 Nether update, but players have been building chains for much longer than that. This is the chain section that we're going to use and animate. You determine the number of frames that you're going to use based on the smallest amount of repeatable section. In this case, we're going to use eight blocks. This way we have eight unique frames that we can just repeat over and over. Come in and hit save. Over here, I have a demonstration set up for how we're going to create a longer chain from our repeatable section of Link. We have two different sections that are stacked on top of each other. And as we cycle through these, you will notice that they are offset by one block each time. Now we could do this and manually load all of our frames in and then save each individual one. Or we can come over here to a little bit of a more automated section where all you have to do is click the note block and it will automatically stack our chains and temporarily save them with the redstone and then also display them off to the side. The section we are going to be saving is the section shown here in yellow. Uh, now as I come over here I can come through and save each one permanently. Let's take one last look to show how they slowly move up one block at a time. Now that we have all of our frames saved we can start building up our contraption. We're gonna start off with a line of eight blocks and a line of eight structure blocks on top. If you activate your structure block from the block down below, it will do one structure block at a time. We need to add an observer buffer to combat the fact that this observer will actually activate twice. So. You see there it activated both on the power and depower state. When we have it on three or four ticks, it will activate twice. But by installing this repeater, set it three ticks, repeater activates once, even though the observer has activated twice. Now to automate this a little more, we're going to line up an observer with a repeater buffer looking at this line of repeaters. On the opposite side, we're going to go the opposite direction. So from this side, we're going from 0 to 7, which in our case is our up animation. On this side, we're going from 7 down to 0, which will give us our down animation. And to demonstrate, it now looks like it's going down as it cycles through. But going the other direction, it looks like it cycles up. Now we can further automate this system by creating a loop. Once we activate this lever, it will depower the block and make the redstone torch come on. This observer chain detects the change in the torch and creates a pulse that will begin our loop. And now it repeats because this block powers the redstone and it is a repeatable circuit. Add it to the rest of our system here, and you'll notice that the block here with the lever is on top of our last observer in the circuit. So now when we do this, it speeds along nonstop. In order to make it go the other way, we need to unpower this here, swing on over, and activate the other side. So we need to add a pulse extender. Pulse extenders are pretty simple. We're going to add a pulsed redstone signal. This repeater set to four ticks. You have two comparators that go in the same direction to some redstone that then loops. Each time it loops around, it reduces the redstone signal by one, and the repeater over here eventually becomes unpowered. Add that to both ends over here. We get our input from this here redstone. Attach it over here. We want to run a redstone line all the way across all of our observers. This will create a circuit that can be controlled. This way you only have one of the two circuits running at any one time. Take a redstone block. If at any point we want to change the animation, all we have to do is apply a solid redstone signal over here. It stops the animation and after the pulse extender deactivates, it activates the other side. 
Now let me show you some of the wireless controls that we're going to use for this animation. Pretty simple stuff. We're going to save just a block of air. We're also going to save a block of redstone. These are used respectively in order to start the animation and to stop the animation. Next up we have our speed change. This is just a row of repeaters each one set at their respective speeds. So one tick, two ticks, three ticks, and four ticks. And that's all we need in order to control our circuit. And let's see how that's implemented. Over here we have our final circuit. In order to turn off our animation, these two blocks when activated will load in a redstone block there and a redstone block there. These will power our magenta block and depower our redstone torch. In order to activate it, we are going to have a mixture of an off and an on, which is an air and a redstone block. This applies a redstone block here and a air block here. If we want to go the other way, this one here will do an up animation. We'll put an air block there, redstone block there. Now anytime we want to change the speed, we should first turn off our circuit, change the speed down to four ticks, and then we can apply our direction. Now what we're doing with the speeds here is we have two of the same speed fours. They're just going to be lined up on these two lines, rotated 90 degrees, so that way we can have them go in the right direction. And this is your final circuit. Hopefully the step-by-step -step tutorial has made it easier for you to make this. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.